Welcome to part three of Heart to Home Bible Study. We have been looking at the entire book of Jonah. Yes, been good. It's been very good. It's been very rich and very uh, just a wonderful time to really draw close to the Lord and to look at the life of Jonah, but also look at our own lives. Uh, and in part three today, uh, the main point of chapter three, because each one of these parts, we're breaking down the chapter, That's right. not verse by verse. I know, it's not as good as mine. Not as go good, but I'm getting there. <laughs> She's trying. So chapter three, yes. uh, the entire point of this is that this world is your Nineveh That's right, it and is you are called to go into it. And that is not only the point of this chapter, chapter three, but it's also the main point of the book of Jonah. This world is your Nineveh and you are called to go into it. Amen. So the scripture that we're going to open up with is uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. And he said, Jesus, red letter, Hallelujah. go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. So we are to go. go. We are called to go into our uh, mission field. And that could be your workplace, That's right. that could be your school, that could be your town. You don't have to go necessarily into another country or another side of the world. Your feet, where your feet are, that's where your mission field is. Right. So we're called to go into our Nineveh. That's and right. ultimately what had to happen with Jonah and what has to happen in our heart, if we truly want to be uh, servants of the Lord, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus and, and really see that book of Acts, the, the pursuing of the gospel in our generation, then our heart has to get on the same beat as Jesus, That's the right. same beat as Jesus. And it is sometimes, I know that the mission field is what she was speaking of, Michelle was, but sometimes the biggest mission field is our family. It's our own home. And it's hard to minister yes. to your family and sometimes even to your friends. But that's who we're to reach out. We're to show the love of God, but also show Jesus who lives big inside of us. And that's yes. what, what Jonah had to do. He had to. He had to reach out to literally his neighbors. Remember, his, his home uh, was on the other side right. of the Assyrians, of Nineveh. So the Lord is calling us to walk in compassion and mercy. And this is something that's easier said than done. It is. It is. It's hard. It is not always easy to do. And yet the Lord doesn't call us to do the easy. He calls us to, to step into those difficult places. But we need to recognize that his heart breaks for the things that are happening in this world. Yes, it does. It, it breaks his heart. Uh, to see the hardness of heart and to see people turn from him. And the Lord's compassion is something that we need to be sensitive to. Throughout the four Gospels, we see that it was compassion that propelled the ministry of That's Jesus. Right specifically healing. That's right. We see that a lot in the book of Luke. We'll see where it'll say something like, um, the Lord was moved by compassion. Jesus was moved by compassion right. and healed them all. That's right. So compassion is linked to miracles. And so we have to be sensitive to other people's pain. Now, I'm going to ask this question. I love asking questions. Now okay. I know where you get it from. Yes, it's, it works. You get it from me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, do you recognize when other people are hurting. To me, it's the easiest thing to see. She's extremely good at it. Yeah. I have to think a little bit harder. I, I can recognize it, but I'm not to this level. To me, it's, it's obvious. Yeah. It's very like they're holding obvious. a sign. I am hurting. Yes. Yeah. That's, That's pretty bad. She's very good at that. But think about it for yourself for a moment. Are you good at recognizing when people are hurting? Sometimes it's very easy to see. Right. And then other times people can be wearing a smile and yet their heart sign is saying, I'm hurting, I'm depressed, right. I'm full of anxiety, hopeless. Um, and so we have to be sensitive to people's hurt. So That's let's right. look at the book of Jonah. Okay. Jonah chapter 3 and verse 3. Okay. And this is the first time that we see obedience. Oh, that word that we also it love. It took us two chapters, two and a quarter to get there. So Jonah chapter 3 and verse 3. So Jonah arose and mm -hmm. went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey. Okay, so a couple things here. First of all, he was obedient. Well, he wasn't in the fish anymore. Yes, he has been vomited onto the shore. 
uh, he is walking in obedience and he goes into, again, we're to go into Nineveh. He yes. goes into what the Lord has told him to do. Now, if we see a little further on, and we're more than welcome to read this if we want, um, but for the most part, to condense the story, Jonah goes to Nineveh. Nineveh falls to their knees after hearing Amazing. the word of the Lord through Jonah. This word goes to the king. Right. So it wasn't a, a direct meeting between Jonah and the king. The word gets to the king. The king, he arose from his throne. He took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth. This is representing a, a heart of repentance. That's right. And then he proclaims the declaration to to the Ninevites saying that everyone is to fast. Can you imagine this? Uh, yes. Everyone is to fast, including all of the, the animals. animals, everything, the chickens, the every single person of all age, everyone is to fast and they are to urgently pray to God, the one true living God, for mercy and compassion that his right. fierce anger would relent. Now, I want us again to think about this. This is Nineveh the capital of Assyria. That's right. This city is about the size of modern day London. It's pretty big. This is a large city. This is not Missoula. No. This no. is not uh, any town that is, or yeah. city that's in, in the state of huge. Missoula. Or it's the state of Montana. You're talking the entire state of Montana, give or take. Yeah, Or give. That. Yes. You're talking a, an exceptional amount of people, women and children, fathers, uh, elderly, teens, young adults, you're talking a, a huge group of people. So why would a nation the size of London in a moment fall to their knees and repent? A couple of reasons why. Number one's the easy answer, God. Right. Like his presence. To me, that's what it was. His yes. presence moved on their heart and immediately uh, he's, he created their heart. The scripture says that God holds the king's heart in his hands, and he can turn it like a water brook. That's he right. controls the heart of man. The second reason why some people could have fallen to their knees is Jonah's appearance. That's true. He would have been bleached. He would have been bleached white. The chemicals in the fish's stomach would have bleached him white. He would have stunk. Yeah, he would have smelled. He would have been a little malnourished, no food, water for three days. And also been able to speak some words that shook the people. It would have shaken them to his core. We just saw he has a supernatural encounter through his prayer in, in Jonah chapter 2. He's now bleached white from the acid. And the third reason, which is not mentioned in the word of God, but Josephus does mention it, is that the men on the ship the ones who threw him overboard, right. that those men were actually from a town next to Nineveh. See, I didn't know and that. And they could have gotten back in time and said, you got to hear this story. Yes. Listen to this story. And it actually is recorded that they came back to Nineveh and they said, listen, there was a man on the ship. The storm came. As soon as we threw him overboard, what happened? The storm stopped. Away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the man that they assumed was dead comes back on the shore and is staring at them. Does that not remind you, though, of Jesus? Yes, it does. It was assumed that he was dead. dead. The story was over. It was fact. Everyone saw it with their eyes. And then three days later, who's staring them in the face? In the face. Who is it? Jesus. Yes. And what happened with his appearance? There was a transformation that took place. He's now bleached white. Yes. He's got robes of righteousness. Right. And literally Mary Magdalene looks at him and says, aren't you the gardener? I know. Aren't you the gardener? She couldn't even recognize who he was. So these are some of the reasons that, that they would have fallen to their knees. That's right. But we're going to turn to Luke okay. chapter 11. I love this. This is Jesus speaking. Okay. Luke chapter 11, verses 29 through 30. And you're oh already there. Well, yes, that's because I try to show you how better I am. You at are drills. incredible. I know. Okay, Luke chapter 11, verses 29 through 30. And when the people were gathered thick together, mm -hmm. he began to say, This is Jesus. This is an evil generation. I think he's talking to us now. I think he is. <laughs> they seek a sign. Wow. There shall no sign be given, but the sign of Jonas, who is Jonah, mm -hmm. the prophet. For as Jonas, Jonah, was a sign unto the Niv Ninevites. 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 That's a hard one. <laughs> I've always just said the people of Nineveh. Yeah. 
so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. So he's declaring Jonah was the type and shadow. Right. He was assigned to the Ninevites. Hey, you need to repent. So if he was a sign, then perhaps the Lord was preparing their hearts beforehand. That's right. Who knows what was happening in their hearts? And who knows who had uh, plowed the ground, who was perhaps filleted alive? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But they, Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites for that day. And in the same way, so shall the Son of Man be a sign to us in this day. That's right. And in the same way, we are assigned to this world. That's right. We are a sign and a wonder. We should be writing something on the sign of our life, and we should be causing this world to wonder right. what is so different about us. That's so, right. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. All right. We should glow in the dark. Hallelujah. Okay. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in the Mount of Zion. That's so good. Yes, we're, we're a sign, sign and a wonder. And a wonder. <laughs> we are a sign and a wonder. So the question that we asked our youth and, and also that the ladies' meetings, uh, the ladies' Bible studies, is what is the sign of your life showing? Yeah. What are people reading on the sign of your life? Are they reading worry? Are they reading rebellion? Fear? Are they reading sadness? Yeah. Perhaps a double standard. What is the sign of your life reading? Or are they reading the mercy of God? Yes. Are they reading a peace that passes all understanding? Are they reading joy unspeakable and full of glory? What is the sign of your life reading? Like you said, people hold up a sign yes, and they might be smiling and yet their sign says something different. Well, you remember that commercial. It's on now. It's for some antidepressant drug. Yes. But people hold this sign up. Like and they're, a little mask. It's a little, a little mask. Little, and it's to say, room. you know, here I'm sad that I can put this smiley face, happy on. face on. And so often we go by that. But it's the heart cry of people. Yes. And I know for myself, people will come up and they'll say, why are you happy? Why do you always seems th things seem to work out for you? And our responses always need to be Jesus. Yes. It's not a drug. It's not a accident. There's no accidents in the kingdom of God. It's the goodness of God that yes. follows after us. And you and you recognize that He's interested in the heart. Right. Not the outward appearance. That's right. First Samuel talks about this. The Lord is interested in the heart not the outward appearance. And so each one of us are a sign and a wonder. That's right. We are. We're, I like that. Every single person, whether you're saved or not saved, you are a sign. Whether you, it's a good sign or a bad sign. You are a walking you know, sign. You are a sign. And the Ninevites, they were a sign. They were a sign of destruction, rebellion, um, torture, torture, just wickedness. That was, that was what was written on the sign of their life. And so what's written on the sign of our life? That's right. And this is so important because not only is Jonah hitting this, but Jesus is hitting this. He's Same saying thing. he is a sign. He is the greatest sign that we could ever need That's for right. this wicked and perverse generation. But you also are a sign. You're a sign and a wonder. People, we hear it all the time. It's, it's become almost Christian cliche. People are to look at you and wonder what's different about you. Yeah, but are they actually doing that? Yeah. Are they actually looking at you and wondering, hey, why are you still alive? Or are they still so much in the image of the world yes. that you don't see a difference? It, it, it's, a, it's conforming. Romans, uh, I believe it's chapter 12, a, a conforming to the, wor the world and the pattern of this world or is it a transforming that's take place? Well, I What's know, happened I, to our signs? You actually said it. I have people, I had to go visit someone in the hospital, and the lady recognized that I was one that came into the hospital. You were the dead one. And she said, you look good. And I said, it's the goodness of God, yeah. you know, because people see you as a sign and a wonder. I love that scripture. You're a sign and a wonder. And that came from Isaiah <laughs> I 8, love that. 18, I love that. but also Luke 11, 29 and That's 30. Right. And it's in the book of Jonah. That's right. It's and it's all connected. Three times we need to believe it. <laughs> At yes. least three. Okay. So Jonah was faithful. First time that we see this. Yes. He was faithful to his calling. Remember, he's part of the school of the prophets. His, his co uh, school, what would that be? Classmates was Elijah, Elisha, Jonah, all in the same time frame. Can you frame. imagine that reunion? Whoa, what a group. <laughs> what a group. And then on top of it, Elijah, he says almost in an arrogance, 
uh, after everything that happened with fire falling down and, and fire consuming the, the offerings to Baal and Asher, and he flees to the mountains. That's and right. He says, God, I'm all your, you have left. I'm all you have. And the Lord says, no, I have more hiding. Don't worry. <sighs> Don't worry. There's always more. There's always more than what you That's think right. that are for the Lord, who love the Lord. Right. You're not alone. That's There's right. more than just you. Yeah. Uh, so who even knows all the men and women who were uh, compiled during this time? But he finally steps into his calling. Yes. He steps into to say yes to what the Lord has asked him to do, which is what he said. He said, I'll, I'll fulfill my vow to you. In, in uh, Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9, I'll be faithful to fulfill my vow. He does. And let's read that in verse Five. Okay, verse 5. Yes, ma'am. Jonah chapter 3, verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them unto the least of them. Wow, so immediately they say yes. So there's about a million people, maybe a million and a half now in the state of Montana. Can you imagine every single man, woman, and child, all the cows, which outnumber the people, yeah. All the chickens, yeah. all the goats, all the puppy dogs, the kitty cats, every single thing proclaiming a fast, you have to fast and you have to repent to the Lord. Well, it reminds me, you know, I, I'm doing this study in Exodus concerning mm. the, the plague, the 10 plagues. Yes. And I don't know why it hit me so much this time that when this proclamation came from God concerning the plague, he not only included the firstborn of the, the Pharaoh and even the, the lowest of the citizens, but, the but of the animals. I mean, can you imagine? And I was like, what do the animals do? The animals are innocent. The animals are totally innocent. But see, you see this again yeah. where God is saying, I want your animals clean this way. Well. And yet creation cries holy. So if the rocks cry out, the animals cry out, right. we, we as human beings That's have the right. best ability. We just can be heard. We just have the ability to talk. Uh, which is not always a good thing. Um, <laughs> but the Lord, He's wanting complete, right? And I love it because it's every area of your life. That's right. It's not just, well, God, I'll, I'll transform my home and I'll worship you in my home, but in my work life, eh, not there. Not there. Or God, I'll, I'll serve you uh, in my work life and I'll be a testimony to my coworkers, but when I'm around my family and my friends, I'm just going to live my old self. Uh, no, it's a complete transformation. It has to be. Hard. Every level and every degree. So now let's look in verse 10. Okay. Jo Jonah chapter 3 and verse 10. And God saw their works that they mm. turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. Wow. And he did it not. Wow. So my translation actually says he relented. He relented. He relented. And this is so beautiful because the Lord, he's not, like you said, angry. I'm going to no, beat you not. with a bat. He relented. And yet at the same time, he won't relent until he has all of our heart. Right. So he wanted total transformation and the Lord did that. So let's look at Luke chapter 6 okay. and verse 36. Luke chapter 6. Because we're going to shift this on its head a little bit. The Lord relented, but how are we with our mercy and compassion? Well, we're going to see that in chapter 4. We're getting four. into that in chapter 4. But it we're goes just, on. We're building up into we're it. We're building up to it. So Luke chapter, chapter six, 6, verse 36. Yes, ma'am. He's talking to each one of us. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. So we're to show mercy. That's right. And it's hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would show mercy, and they yeah. don't. Um, so we are to show mercy uh, do unto others as we would have done unto us. We all want to have that, that hand of grace extended in our life, but we're very stingy on extending it to other people. And I think in today's world, especially after this COVID stuff and everything else that's gone on, people are angry. Yes. People are cutting you off in traffic. They're screaming at each other. Ugh, and it's really, anger. really hard because you want to just come back and you just have got to just swallow hard and say, God, I'm going to be merciful to yeah. them because what happened is that you were merciful to me. It's, that's so true because we don't like extending mercy to others. 
and yet he was merciful. He forgave us of the entire bank vault of That's wrongs right. that we That's did. Right. And yet someone does something wrong to us. We get angry. And we hold it on for the rest of our lives. Our, our level of endurance is directly connected to our capacity to forgive. And we, we get so easily offended right. in, in this generation and That's in right. this modern world. And yet we're to be merciful, even as the Father is merciful. So James chapter 2. You gave me that very quickly. I gave it last second because I love the last sentence. Okay. But so we have read to that? read. Okay. We have to read James chapter 2 in verse 13. It's okay. all good, but I love the last sentence. For he shall have judgment without mercy mm. and has showed no mercy, but mercy rejo rejoices against judgment. So... The main translation that I... I want to hear what yours says. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah. See, King James mercy, has to be a little stronger. A little bit stronger. So it's saying man doesn't know how to work, walk no, in mercy. We don't know. The, the world will never show true mercy. But his mercy, it triumphs over judgment. So this week, I want to encourage you. We want to encourage you to become a living, walking sign for the Lord. Yeah. Become a sign and a wonder. Yes. Become a sign and a wonder and walk in mercy because His mercy, it triumphed over the judgment that you deserved. That's so right. walk in mercy to those around you. Go into your Nineveh. Go into your Nineveh and show mercy. That's Amen? Right. Amen. And just Amen. And, and ask God to show your heart when your sign is not correct. Yeah. When your wonder is like, boy, people are wondering if I'm even a Christian. Just ask God to expose that in your heart and then be quick. What did we say the first one? Be quick, quick to obey. and quietly oh, obey. Oh, yes, quickly and quietly. And then That's obey good. to what he says because he's trying to transform your signs yeah. so that you can be a blessing to your world. When you encounter someone, I heard this a couple of years ago, when you encounter someone, they should learn more about Jesus than they learn about you. Yeah, it's And hard. so check your sign and do it quickly and quietly. and quietly and show mercy. He delights. He delights in showing mercy yes, he because does. his mercy triumphs over judgment. Yes. So thank you so much for watching. Next week is the final part. I know. I've really enjoyed this. Part four. It's not as incredible as verse by verse. Well, but one day you'll learn. One day I'll get there. Yeah. We love you guys so much. We'll see you next week for part four.